The recent announcement of the release date for the Indigo Disc, the second part of the Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet DLC, was a pretty good thing, but the information we have is still very, very little. Unless I'm posting this after a surprise trailer, and hopefully I am, but I don't think so. Still, looking back, we have so many mysteries yet to solve that there's always something to talk about. So hey, I'm not so a strainer, and the original dragon never existed. Yet. Let's get into it. The tale of Urashima Taro that we've talked about multiple times eventually takes Urashima to the Dragon Palace. This is relevant because it feels like it is related to the story of Terrapagos somehow, mostly because it is a turtle and their energy seems to be somehow connected to a place with no time, which the Dragon Palace kinda is. Today though, the important part is that it is named the Dragon Palace, and it is named Dragon Palace because it is the home of Ryujin, the dragon god in Japanese mythology. And when we apply that to Pokemon, when we think of a dragon god in Pokemon terms, there's one thing that comes to mind, and that's one thing we have never seen before. Lugia, up until now, was the connection to the dragon god, Ryujin, which is also kind of a sea god, sometimes named Watatsumi, since Lugia can be caught in the sea spirit's den, known in Japanese as the Watatsumi den. But Lugia is no dragon, and the gen with legendary dragons is the one that has a revisit lurking around the corner. I'm talking of course about Gen 5 and how it is already connected to Gen 9. And I mean, Dragon God could easily be a good way to look at the mysterious and legendary original dragon. And here is where things get a little bit fantastical. You see, the thing about the original dragon is that it used to be Hurum, Reshiram and Zekrom all together in one. That's the legend. Or should I say, one of the legends. The first story we hear about is how the twin heroes had that one powerful dragon in their possession and used it to create Unova. Then, they both had different ideas of what they wanted, and so, the dragon turned into Reshiram and Zekrom. Thurum, supposedly, was the shell that stayed behind. This last part was told to us by Drayden. But then again, there are more legends than that one, and another legend says that Thurum fell from space in an icy meteor and thus created a giant chasm. The fact that we have a lot of space-related stuff in that area seems to make that a pretty believable legend as well. But both of them can't be right. If Thurum fell from space as Thurum, then the twin heroes never had the original dragon, they never had the three dragons together. And if they did have the original dragon, then the giant chasm had to be formed by some completely different event. Something is not quite right about the legends. But one thing they are correct about, Thurum can fuse with those two only just one at a time. This is nothing new though, and recently we saw two interesting examples that relate to these inconsistencies. In Pokemon Sword and Shield, there was a big misunderstanding in the legends and stories told in the Gala region, a little bit because of Swordworth and Shieldbert and the royal family. And in Gen 7, we saw Necrozma being able to absorb Lunala or Solgaleo, despite there being no mention of them ever being one, they were simply beings of light. So, in Gen 5, while the dragon's connections are told in legend, there's a chance things are told in a different way from how they actually happened. The bond of the dragon's breaking might simply be a reference to the twin's bond breaking itself, and the fact that the fusion happens with Kyurem through the DNA splicer might mean that that item was developed somehow in order to reach said goal, made by someone who truly believed the legend in spite of them not really being at all connected. Kinda like Colrus creating the End Lunarizer and the End Solarizer in order to trigger the fusion of Necrozma with Lunala or Solgaleo despite that not really being a thing. There's also the Pokédex entry for Hurum that says this legendary ice Pokémon waits for a hero to fill in the missing parts of its body with truth or ideals, which kind of tells you that only one dragon can be fused with it at a time and not really two. So the original dragon might simply be the stuff of dreams. Yeah, dreams, imagination, legend and myth. All things that, together with Gen 5, are pretty much connected to Gen 9. We've talked about it multiple times, how Terrapagos might have access to a place like a dream world, a place where dreams exist, a place that connects time and space, mind and body, a place that might be responsible for the paradox Pokemon, which might as well be imagination come to life. A while ago I was tagged by Victini Blast on Twitter on a post referencing the very Terra-like crystals that can be found in Unova, and while I doubt that at the time that had any meaning, we can deny that right now with the absolute confirmation that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet connect Paldea and Unova, and with the Gen 5 region having so much to do with dreams, they might actually mean something. You have the dream world, the dream yard, the dream radar, even the interlink, which is mysteriously at the center of the region, just like the great crater of Paldea. And they are all very much dream related. So what I'm getting at is, could the original dragon never really have existed? 
Could it simply be a creation of the human mind? A creation of stories and legends being told and retold? Something that fueled people's obsessions through the ages, resulting in the creation of the DNA splicer, which is a very mysterious item with no backstory at all. Could that obsession now live in someone else? Someone that through the power of their energy can actually bring it to life? We will very likely revisit Unova next, either in this gen or in the next one, and in my opinion it will be a sequel for Black Jew and White Jew, and I would bet that the focus of the story would be the original dragon. Black and White gave us the Pokemon as individuals, Black Jew and White Jew gave us the Black Urim and White Urim, so it's fair to assume that a third game would give us all three fused together. But if that doesn't exist, it makes sense for it to somehow be created in the same place that created those crazy paradox Pokemon. Just like the quote-unquote time machine might simply be a way to access that realm, that dream world and quote-unquote get what you want, the entry link might be an actual physical entrance to it, and be the place where our next adventure takes us. And in a place where someone's dream might become real, I won't be surprised to see someone's obsession over the original dragon and its myth do exactly that. But that's not the only thing that makes me think that a fusion of three legendary Pokemon might be on its way. When we saw these two, the imagined Pokemon, we thought that we would see a fusion of the legendary beasts and the legendary Swords of Justice. But that's not what happened. We actually got the six Pokemon as separate Paradox Pokemon. But it is a pretty interesting hint that the legendary trio fusion might actually be on its way. The undeniable truth is how we are approaching the time of Gen 5 stuff, and the original dragon seems to be the only thing not revealed to us, at least the only major thing, and is also kind of a mystery. It is also undeniable how Gen 9's Blueberry Academy, being in Unova and with an apparent interest and curriculum that has not only a battle focus but also a Terra energy focus, are hints at a new page for the old region instead of a look back at the past. I've talked about this in a recent video, but I really believe that they want you to question the present instead of the past when it comes to Gen 5, be it through Gen 9 or even Legends Arceus. And with dreams playing such a big role in both generations, I'm almost sure that they will be what drives the plot for a new game, and what ultimately makes the OG Dragon a reality. But with the Indigo disc still on its way, I guess only time will tell. And that is all I have for you today, a look back at the OG Dragon and why it might be a little bit more myth than reality. But what about you? In what Kyurem legend do you believe? Let me know in the comments down below. And now, like the video if you like it, dislike if you don't, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content and also ring the bell so you know when the next video is out. You can follow me on social media and Twitch, I send that Wednesday to Sunday, not Saturday, or join our Discord, all the links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.